Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mission Point. Hey, let's all stand this morning. I want to first thank everyone this morning for our night of worship last night. Amen. Because of our church and our community, we were able to pay off our LifeWise bus. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God's good this morning. All right, who's ready to worship? Amen. I've seen shame, the kind that comes from mistakes, the kind that won't go away when I turn around, they're right there to remind me. I've seen a regret, the kind that messes with your head. this morning.
This morning's verse is going to be Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Aren't you glad that God directs your path today? We've been doing this song for the last couple of times that we've been worshiping together, and I think it's super important that we... You know, last night was just proof of it. We needed a miracle and God showed up. Amen. And if you came this morning and you're having maybe an issue or a problem or something like that, I want you to know when pastor gives altar call, you can lay that down and God can help you. Do you know the greatest miracle is when a person accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? The greatest miracle, I can tell you, beyond any miracle, is when someone accepts Jesus. Maybe today we might see a miracle in church today. Maybe today we might see something wonderful. And pray for us as we sing this song. And as we're going to have a baptism this morning, second Sunday with another baptism. God's doing wonderful things here at Mission Point, isn't he? Amen. Let's sing this song together. We need a miracle.
See you all this morning. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Devlin, and here are your weekly announcements. First off, we have People Helping People. Mission Point continues to provide the meal for the needy with People Helping People on the third Saturday of the month. The next opportunity to serve our community is Saturday, August 19th. We ask you to be at the pavilion by 1035 a.m. Please reach out to Tiffany Winters for more information. Lauren Talley. It's a free concert right here at Mission Point. Join us during worship service on Sunday, August 27th. Lauren Talley will be performing. Lauren is a world-renowned gospel music artist and also an author. Ram Booster Fundraiser. We have been given the opportunity to work for the Ram Boosters. For each volunteer, we make $60, and that goes directly towards our camp fund. So here's where we need your help. Through the end of the year, we have 10 Sundays we need to fill with three volunteers each time. We are in need of three volunteers on Sunday, September 3rd. You will volunteer from 5 to 8 p.m. If this is something you'd like to volunteer for, please see Tiffany Winters. And if you have any questions, you can ask Pastor Dan. The Young at Heart Day Trip to Amish Country. If you're advanced in age but still young at heart, this is for you. The Young at Heart group, and if you're not sure if you're advanced in age, that's 55 and older, this will be taking, uh, they're going to be taking a day trip to Amish Country on Tuesday, September 12th. The bus will leave from the church at 9 a.m. Please sign up under the mission table if you plan to go. Awana kickoff. Guys, Awana is only five weeks away from kicking off. Parents, if you're interested in putting your kids in Awana, you can pre-register your kids immediately following service today. Men's Kentucky trip is back. Please speak with Pastor Dan if you are interested in going this September to the Men's Kentucky trip. Pastor Dan is going to be announcing the date and the cost next week. Thank you, guys. Kids, you are dismissed. Right. That's awesome. That was just like one of those little cheap Japanese ninja shows, you know. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Welcome to our cheap Japanese church service. Hey, um, we got something for you. We're going to have, starting today, how many of you brought visitors today? Yeah. Yes. No, I look at the hands on my side. Oh, okay, now listen to this. Okay, I'm not talking to these people. I'm talking to these people. Pay attention. So on September 17th, we're having Back to Church Sunday. This is where we want to bring all of your visitors in again. We're going to have um, a little picnic, a little fellowship, and we're going to have a dunk tank because when we win... We're going to get to dunk Pastor Matt. So I pick the side that already has the most people. No. So No. No. Listen, there, there's a lot of me to dunk. <laughs> and I have to climb a ladder. So he has brand new knees. So let's dunk him. All right. Do you think my team, can, my side can win? I have no doubt. I have a lot of faith in y'all. Are you going to yeah. let him get away with that? Yeah, they are. I see it. They didn't even <laughs> know what to do it. Are. Okay, all right. All right, so there's a couple rules that we got to do, y'all. Yes, pay okay. attention. So what, number one, we need to average from this Sunday through the 17th, we need to average 200 a Sunday. Is that right? Yes. Okay, we want to av- Do you think we can average around 200 a Sunday? There's no doubt in my mind that we can average 200 a Sunday. Surely, yeah. Who's going to invite somebody on my side? Okay, Who's going to yes. invite somebody on my side? Come on. More hands mm. than that. Yeah, see? There we go. I we will get you DQ won. ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beat that. So this is going to be the average from this day until September 17th. 
you've got a month. And every Sunday, we've got to have 200 people, and we've got to have new visitors every Sunday. A new visitor constitutes this, somebody who has not been to Mission Point. Not Cook Road, we're just, we'll go with Mission Point, because they've been around since 2018. So someone who has not visited Mission Point, that constitutes a visitor. Bring them in, sit them on this side, and you'll be good. So I'm going to throw out one more challenge. If my side wins, Pastor Dan has to grow out his hair like mine. There could be no shaving. But if I lose, I will shave my head just like Pastor Dan for a Sunday. Yes. Come on. This, th- this so side. So we need to win. I'm asking. I, I don't know how I'm going to do that unless I glue something up here because it don't grow no more. <laughs> I threw it out there. All right. Thank you. Oh, that's, yeah. Whew. All right, welcome to Mission Point. We're so glad you're here today. We worship Jesus here, and so um, we're just so glad that you're with us today. If you didn't get a visitor's packet when you came in, uh, hopefully in front of you there is a visitor's card. If you could fill that visitor's card out, drop it in the offering box just outside the auditorium, just so that we have a record of your visit, we would appreciate that. And so, all right, I'm excited because I'm just going to walk up here and hit the little button and watch you fall. That's going to be so heart fun. Is so sweet. Mm. Bless your heart. <sighs> I'm not. I'm not. That's going to be so much fun. <laughs> we will see. Time is a friend of truth. We will see. All right, this is Apologetics Month. We just come from Ask the Pastor Month. This is Apologetics Month. What we do is we build a defense for what we believe. And today we're talking about design. So if you'd open your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 3, we're going to talk today about if it looks designed, then it's probably there's a a designer. So last week we were talking about sickness, disease, and death. And we'd said that uh, there was no death before the fall uh, of Adam in the garden. Uh, And because Adam sinned, sin brought forth death, decay, and destruction. And somebody asked the question, They said, well, if there's no death before sin, then what about plants who are living organisms? And God gave them to animals and man to eat. So if they ate them, then plants would die. So there was death before Adam's fall. And that's, let me address that question before we move on. That's that's pretty good. Genesis 1, 29 through 30 says this. God said, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, and everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. Now, the question is, do plants really die? Um, it's, It's not an objection that you can... It really fails to answer the question that plants aren't really, they are alive, but not in the sense that God is talking about a living being that has breath in it, the breath of life. Animals have the breath of life. People have the breath of life. So animals aren't considered to be alive like people and animals are. Does that make sense? They don't have the breath of life. So the word life is never used in the Old Testament when it talks about plants. And just as they're not alive, they they don't actually die. So even though in the Old Testament it talks about the death of a plant or a tree died, there's a different word that's used for that death. So it's not the word that's used for animals and humans. So even though they ate plants before Adam uh, sinned and before uh, death, decay, and destruction... They don't really die, and they're not really alive in the sense that people and animals are. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope that answers the question. If not, come see Pastor Matt after. He'll get into more detail. All right, let's get into Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. I'm going to build a defense on this one. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, we trust God, we take God at his word, and, and I'm going to tell you until Christ comes back to get us or calls me home, do not take me at my word, you take God at his. Amen? All right. But 
Here's the rub. I give you God's word, right? And I hope that you would trust my word because my word is not my word. It's not something that is from man's wisdom. I'm not giving you fancy, eloquent words. Matter of fact, I don't speak English too well at all, so uh, that'll never happen. But it's not man's wisdom I'm giving you. I'm giving you God's wisdom. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, he says, so that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And that's what we're doing. We're trusting in the Lord with all our heart, not leaning on our own understanding. But when you trust God, his word, his knowledge, you can trust in that. And that's what we're doing. That's what we preach. That's what we teach. The truth of God. Psalm 118.8 says this. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Amen? Amen. And now, with that said, we take God at his word. However, we are created in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. And so God does things with a thought out plan. That's the thing. How are are we in the image of God made like God? God does things with a thought-out plan. God has a mind. He has thoughts, not like our thoughts. And so being created in the image of God, we too can design. We too can create. We too can think. Matter of fact, you need to think and you need to build logic and reason so that you can do this, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We are to destroy arguments and every lofty opinion. That's raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captivity to the obedience of Christ. It is a battle for the mind. We're talking about on Wednesday nights, uh, spiritual warfare. It is a battle for the mind. And you need to get your mind in subjection. And you need to build arguments. You need to have the truth in there. If you don't have the truth, you'll never be able to battle that. So when we talk about science and cosmology and climatology and, and people say, well, well, don't go there, Danny. You're not a climatologist. And that is true. Well, don't talk about science, Danny. You're not a scientist. Well, that is true. Well, don't talk about cosmology. You're not a cosmologist. That is true also. But do you know what I am? I'm a biblicist because I believe the Bible and I take God at His word. See, when we talk about creation, evolutionists were not in the beginning. Well, neither were you, Danny. You don't know what happened. Well, absolutely true. I wasn't there in the beginning. They weren't there in the beginning. They are making assumptions. I'm making an assumption. Well, which one's right? Ah, I have somebody who is an eyewitness who is there. Okay, well, that doesn't matter. It does because if I have an eyewitness, he has given me evidence to back up what he says he created. And when you look at the evidence, it points to an intelligent design. And I want you to understand that when, when we talk about God making us in his image, you can make a, a very reasonable, discerning answer by logic and reason based off of data that has been given. Amen? Do you believe in um, all gravity? <laughs> Let's go with that one. You believe in gravity? You know science can't prove gravity, but they know it exists. That's a fun one. Look that up. Go in your studies and look that up. Science cannot prove gravity, but they know it exists. They can show it. I just showed gravity. All right, there you go. Just showed gravity. Oh, man. Yep. Okay, we're done with that one. Anyway, moving on. So so it's a battle for the mind. Um, When we talk about trusting God and taking him at his word, we're using his wisdom, not ours. And so we talked about last week, everybody comes to a place where you're either going to look at the world and everything around you from man's glasses, or you look at it with God's biblical glasses, one of the two. Because whichever uh, pair of glasses you have, it's going to bring you to two different points. But you're still accountable for the one. And that's what we're here to do. So if you lack wisdom... God says this in James 1, 5. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it'll be given. 
Unlike the apostle Peter, I've never seen the Lord Jesus Christ. He walked with him. He talked with him. The Lord Jesus taught him everything that he knew. But just like Peter, I believe in him. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, Peter says, Though you have not seen him, I still love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Amen. Though you do not now see him, I still believe him, and I rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. That is so awesome. I love that. Even though I've never seen Jesus, I still love him, and he gives me joy, inexpressible joy. And you know he doesn't leave me without a defense. That's the thing. I don't believe my Christianity based off of nothing. I don't believe in Jesus Christ based off of nothing. I have a defense. God gives me evidence. Let me use the King James. I love this one. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this. Now faith is substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen? Amen? I love that. When it comes to my faith in Jesus Christ, I have substance and I have evidence. That's amazing. I'm not just believing blindly. And so that is why when God gives me evidence, I get to know him by getting to know his word. I saturate my entire being with the word of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in wisdom. I told you again, I'll tell you again, as many times as I can, be saturated with the word of God, and if somebody cuts you, you're bleeding Bible verses. Amen? Saturate your, your, your whole being with the word of truth so that you can be ready. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, complete patience in all teaching. Be ready. Be ready with your defense. I don't believe blindly, and so we are created in the image of God. Let me pull all this together here. I said all that for a reason and a purpose, and let me give it to you. We are made in the image of God. I trust God with all of my heart, and I don't lean on my own understanding. I'm asking him for wisdom, and he gives me wisdom through the Holy Spirit, and John 16, 13 is called the spirit of truth. And when the spirit of truth dwells in you, he can give you the interpretation of truth. And as I study, the Holy Spirit of truth gives me the answer. As I saturate myself with the word of truth, I have substance and evidence. God gives me wisdom, not my wisdom, his wisdom, not uh, allowing me to go out so that I can destroy arguments and give a defense to anybody who asks me, of the hope and the joy that I have within me being ready in season and out of season. Amen? Amen. That was a lot, man. I almost lost my breath. All right, let's pray. We'll get into our building and defense. Uh, Pastor Matt, you want to open us in a word of prayer, please? We'll get into our study. Amen. Thank you so much. When we talk about truth, logic, reason, I want you to understand some things, um, especially about science. You can gather data and come to a logical, reasonable conclusion. Amen? God is a creative mind who thinks, who acts, who feels, and he created us to do the same thing. We're to do things with a thought-out plan. And so you can, you can gather data and come to a logical, reasonable conclusion. And that's what God expects us to do sometimes. So when we talk about science, science cannot account for everything. Hello. Is this thing on? Science cannot account for everything. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Now don't talk about science, Danny. You're a pastor, not a scientist. Well, that's true. 
But let me, let me give you some things that, that cannot be proven. William Lloyd Craig is a great apologist, and uh, uh, I use some of his arguments, and I got a couple here. He, he's got many, but let me just give you a few. Logical and mathematical truths cannot be proven by the scientific method. That's a fun one. Logical, logic, and math cannot be proven by the scientific method. Science presupposes logic and math already exist. So try to prove that by science. All they're going to do is take you in a circular reasoning. And that's where a lot of their stuff goes. Ethical beliefs, values, morals cannot be proven scientifically. You can't prove by science that the Nazis did anything wrong. Right? Hello? So, so if you're going to go and prove morals, how are you going to do that scientifically? There's no, there's no scientific basis. When we talk about science itself, can't prove itself by the scientific method because a lot of science is based off of unprovable assumptions. Does that make sense? And if it don't, go do your research. That's some fun stuff when you get into science. And they're like, well, why do these people believe this stuff if it can't be, and they can't, and this doesn't, and they have to. I'm just saying this. At the end of the day, they have to believe something happened in the beginning, and I have to believe something happened in the beginning. And I'm by logic and reason gathering data and coming to the best possible conclusion based off of the evidence. Amen? So, when we talk about logic, math, ethics, morals, there you go, morals. I can tell you that morality exists. And I can tell you that everybody within themselves has a sense of right and wrong. Do you know why? Because the truth giver tells me that. In Romans chapter 2, verse 14 through 16, God says this. For when Gentiles who do not have the law, they weren't given the law of God. But God says, by nature, they do what the law requires. They are a law to themselves. Even though they do not have the law, they show the law. that It's the work of the law is written on their hearts. With their conscience also bears witness. And their conflicting thoughts, they either accuse or excuse them on that day. When according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. There is going to come a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And whether you accepted him or not, you are without excuse because your conscience tells you there is right and wrong. And if there is right and wrong and you have a moral law written on your mind, then there's got to be a moral lawgiver. Amen? It's inexcusable. Everybody has some sense of right and wrong. That's why, that's why we prove the Nazis to be wrong. Because it goes against everything God teaches in that moral law. Everything has that sense. Logic and reason. Why do we do things based off of logic and reason? Do you know the apostle Paul gave the gospel? You know what the gospel is? It's the good news. Jesus died for you. He can help you with your addictions. He can help you with your problems. He can help you with your anxieties. God can help you with everything. Amen? And they're like, wow, this is great. And you know what Paul did? Paul went out and he built a defense and he gave the gospel based off of logic and reason. How'd you like to preach the gospel with logic and reason? That's amazing. The apostle Paul did it so many times. Matter of fact, in Acts chapter 26, verse 24, Festus, he's before the governor. He says, man, he goes, Paul, you have had so much learning. You are a learned dude and you are mad with information. In verse 25, he says, he says, uh, the New King James puts it this way. But he said, I'm, I'm not mad, most noble Festus. He said, but the words I'm speaking to you are from truth and reason. It wasn't Paul's wisdom he was giving him. It was God's wisdom. He went through the whole thing, how Jesus came and he died and he suffered and he was buried and rose again. He's just giving God's wisdom. That's the gospel right there. God's wisdom in the gospel, God's wisdom in everything. Let's get into the design. This is fun. This is amazing. When we talk about design, if it looks like it was designed... 
it was probably has a designer. I mean, I love choppers. I'm not talking about helicopters. They're motorcycles. They're all chopped out, and they got the flames on the side with the skull, or, um, with um, crosses and good Bible verses. Um, <clears throat> anyway, you did, cut that out of there, David. So, but man, you look at some of those, you go, man, these guys designed some weird-looking, amazing stuff. I'm like, that is amazing. That, that has to be a designer. And you look at that and you go, yeah, somebody designed it. But I want to use, by logic and reason, let me give you the scientific proven method of cause and effect. You know what cause and effect is? The effect did not cause itself. Something outside the effect caused it, basically. Uh, The Mona Lisa. That's a picture of, I don't know if that's Mona Lisa or if that's just the name of the picture. I don't know. Who That was uh, Leonardo. One of the Ninja Turtles, but anyway, this thing right here, it is absolutely, I mean, that looks ugly to me, but probably worth millions. That didn't happen by chance. Somebody painted that, right? The Sistine Chapel. I've never been there. If I don't see it before I die, it's not a big deal, but it would be something that I would love to go see. That'd be something cool. Anybody, anybody ever been to the Sistine Chapel? If you don't know where it's at, I'm sure you've not been there. (laughs) Okay, so this thing done by Michelangelo, uh, another one of the mutant ninja turtles. He did a fantastic job up there. That is amazing. You look at that and you can't help. Matter of fact, I think in there one with God and man and they're like the fingers almost touching thingy. Um, You can't look at that and see that there's not a designer. Somebody designed that with a thought out plan and put all that stuff Together, I love watching Bob Ross on TV. Oh, put a little happy tree right here, and put a little happy Christian right there. And uh, man, that guy—he was either drunk on drugs or he just loved what he did. One of the two. I don't know. Books. When you look at books, books didn't just create themselves. They have authors. When you look at trees, trees don't just create themselves. A bigger tree outside of that tree let a seed down to create that tree. We see cause and effect everywhere around us. You did not create yourself. Something outside of you created you. Why is it any different with the universe? When we talk about the universe, logic and reason gives us truth. The universe did not create itself. Even scientifically and biblically, they both tell us something outside of time, space, and material created everything in time, space, and material. Do you get that? I want you to understand. Science? Well, science doesn't say nothing. Understand that. Scientists do. (laughs) Science doesn't say anything. Scientists tell you what the science says. But God speaks for himself, so I'm just his messenger. Here's the thing. Science and the Bible says that something outside of time, space, and material created time, space, and material. And that's the beauty of it because here's the thing. If you have material and you don't have space, where are you going to put it? And if you have space and you create material and you put it in that space, but you don't have time, when did you put it? And I know that's kind of funny and it goes through all that stuff, but here's the thing. And this is, you can do your own study on this, but this is Albert Einstein had a problem with this theory of relativity because it didn't prove that the universe was eternal. It proved that it all three began at one time. Time, space, and material began. And based off of logic and reason, by the scientific proven method of cause and effect, the universe did not create itself. Something outside of the universe created itself. And that's a timeless, spaceless, immaterial spirit being called God. Amen? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three of them in the Bible had their part in creation. This is... When we talk about creation, folks, this is what God says. Not only your conscience, knowing right and wrong, creation proves that there's a creator. 
And when you look at creation all around you, you've got to come to the understanding that there was somebody that designed it all. Designed every creature, designed every person, designed the universe, designed everything. But the problem is, you've got to get to know that designer. Because that day that you're, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord, even the people that look at creation and don't believe in a creator, they'll still have to give an account. Because creation proves that everyone is without excuse. In Romans chapter 1, verse 19 through 20, Paul says this, For what can be known about God? You want to know God? It's clearly shown to us. Because God has shown it to us. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power, his divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. And the things that have been made so that everybody is without excuse. The universe was created with such precision, and it shows a designer. The earth was created with such precision, shows a designer. The moon and its position to the earth was created with such a designer. Colossians 1.17 says that Jesus created all things, and he holds all creation together. How does gravity hold itself here on the earth? The creator, he's holding it all together. Why does oxygen have weight? You know the Bible says oxygen has weight. Hello? And Isaiah says the weight of the air. It has weight. And God uses gravity to hold the weight of the air down so that you can breathe. That's an amazing thing. That's so awesome. Let's look at God's creation. Number one, I want to give you the duck-billed platypus. Anybody ever seen one of those up close? A real live one? No, I, I don't think so. Um, is that the cartoon one? Yeah, not no. I'm talking a real one. This guy right here is an evolutionary nightmare. They love to point out that how the evolutionary process has given it. It was a duck. It was a bird. It was a this. It was that. It was part of the beaver family. All those wonderful things. Now, here's the issue. God created it to be a mammal, but nonetheless, it lays eggs. <laughs> That's a mind-boggling one. But my point is this. Evolution says that there's all these transitory things, and when you look at the fossil records, you can see all these different changes between this species turning into this species. Now, uh, I forget which one that they said that the platypus came from, but all the way back, and it's been proven by the archaeological record that duck-billed platypuses have been uh, found beside dinosaurs, and all the places that they found duck-billed platypus, you know what they found in the fossil records? They look just like a duck-billed platypus. Exact same as it is now. Every fossil record is exactly the same. There's no transitory event. There's no transitory position of anything. They're all the same. They got a beaver's tail. They got a duck bill. They got web feet. They got, they're all the same. From as far back that they go, especially with the dinosaurs. Um, and here's the thing. We know that God created all land animals on day six and all sea creatures on day five. So one of those two days, I don't know if that's a land animal or if it's a sea creature or what it is, but it was either created on day five or six, along with the dinosaurs on day six. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. So they have lids over their eyes. They have fl uh, flaps over their eyes, flaps over their nose, flaps over their ears. And so if they can't see, they can't hear, and they can't smell, how do they get food? <laughs> There's these electro magnetic thingies that are on their nose that sense little shrimp and uh, crayfish or crawfish, depending on what side of the tracks you live on, um, and they can sense the movement. Whenever like a little shrimp or something bends, I guess there's electromagnetic pulses that come off of it, and they sense those, and then blind, no smell and no ears, they can go and find it and dig it up and eat them. That's amazing. With precision. The blue whale, this is a fun one. The blue whale has the loudest noise underwater. Of course, uh, it's, very, it's too low for humans to hear it without some kind of sound equipment. Yet the sound is the loudest throughout the animal kingdom underwater. And researchers have yet to find uh, how, they, how those vocalizations are made. Uh, since they found no 
air making, sound making, or resonating structure to make any kind of sound in a blue whale. There's nothing in there to make a sound. Nonetheless, it makes a sound. How? They don't know. And I don't either, so don't ask me. But, but here's the thing. Designed by complex systems, their ears are able to hear for miles underwater and take so much pressure. Their tail moves vertically, not horizontally. Their blubber has countercurrent heat exchangers inside to keep them warm when they go down into the depths. Their respiratory system is able to withstand high pressure and be able to go underwater for long periods of time. And they do that quite often. Sea creatures were created on day five. You know what they show? Design. Psalm 104, 25, uh, 24 and 25 says, O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living things both small and great. That's an amazing animal. Honeybees. These are my favorite. Not the ones that bite you, but these little honeybees here that just make honey. There's three. There's the warrior bees, the worker bees, and the queen bee. The worker bees are made because they're unfertilized eggs. The warrior bees are the fertilized eggs. And when the queen is about ready to die, she only lives about two years, they make a new queen. And the pheromones that she gives off allows them to start making. This, it's amazing, this design. And so they carry the pollen, they bring it back, it creates the um, honey and then uh, flowers that are, are cross-pollinated by all these bees. But here's, here's the thing, when you talk about bees and its design, plants like orchids that are pollinated by bees and bees that take stuff from plants to make their honey and their combs, they couldn't exist without one another. They would die. So, so which came first, the bee or the orchid? Because <laughs> neither one of them could live without the other. It's like a husband and wife team. Neither one could live without the other. And so bees, their flight is so far surpasses anything that man has made in modern aircraft. Now, let me give you a couple things that people rob God. You want to talk about robbing God? I'm not talking about tithes and offerings. I'm talking about robbing God's design. Do you know there are so many things that we have that man has robbed God to design for us? Uh, Navy ships and uh, submarines, they have robbed from God's design of sharks. This is amazing. I love this one. Sharks have such smooth skin, and if you do it under a microscope, you see the skin structure that a shark has. It is bacteria-free. It is, what are those little things they scrape off the sides of the boat? Barnacles. I see you've seen those before. So there's no animals, there's no barnacles, there's no bacteria. There is nothing that is on shark skin, naturally created by design. And so the Navy took that uh, type of design, put it on their ships, and they put it on their submarines, and it is bacteria-free and nothing can grow on it. And we have taken that same design and we have made medical equipment from it, where our medical equipment is bacteria-free. Hello. Is that not awesome? That's amazing stuff. A man was walking his dog, and he come across uh, a burdock plant. You know what that is? That's one of those stupid plants that probably come after the fall, but you get those little burrs on your socks, and when you get home, you got to pull all those stupid little things off there. Well, guess what? This man walking his dog found this burr, and he's like, my goodness, this thing has such an attraction to dog hair. And then he pulled it off and he was like, well, that's not a big deal. It's not sticking to my skin. And then he thought creative design, logic, reason. He's like, wow, I wonder if I can create something that has some type of something here and something here and they'd stick together and you can kind of pull it off, but it would be hard. And you know what that man created? Velcro. Is that amazing? Robbed God of his design so that you can have Velcro. Mm-hmm. When I get older and I can't tie my shoes, I'm going to be using the Velcro ones. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
<laughs> Shut up, Matt. Wind turbines. Wind turbines were designed by humpback whales because the humpback whales, their fins have little ruffles on them and it uh, uses less drag while going through the water. So when they designed wind turbines, they put on the fins, little wavy things on it like the humpback whales have, and it put a 42% less drag when they're doing their wind turbines. Saved them a lot of energy. Wow, you robbed from God and you can do all kinds of stuff because he's the great designer. You can design all kinds of stuff looking at God's design. Termites, I want you to see this. This is taller than a, a person. This is a termite hill in Australia. These termites are absolute amazing. Um, I give you the sun side. I should, probably should have given you the picture of the other side. So these termites, what they do is they build these big, huge structures, and they're air conditioning naturally. So they take the side towards the sun, and they double layer it, make it all thick with no holes. And then on the other side in the shade, they've got all these tubes that come up. And they take inside those tubes, and they make these little swirly tubes that are open that bring in the outside air and let it swirl down through this whole termite mound, and it gives it air conditioning from top to bottom. Now here's the kicker. A guy in Zimbabwe had a huge building that it cost him astronomical amounts of money to air conditioning. And he said, give me, give me something. Somebody find me something. And a guy used the termite hill. And he put thick layers of darkness that blacked out the sun on one side. And he put tubes. And he put circular motion. And he brought in outside air. And he air conditioned that building naturally from the design of a termite hill. Isn't that crazy? God's design is amazing. And you cannot look at nature and say that it's not designed. Termites. Let me give you another one. This one's for free. This is, I'll just add this a little bit. The wood termites. Hopefully you don't have these in your house. Wood termites, two things. They don't eat wood. Well, yeah, they do. You ever seen the destroy? Well, yes, I know they do eat wood. But here's the thing. They have a symbiote in their stomach. There is another organism inside their stomach that eats wood. Termites don't eat wood. For lack of a better word, the symbiotes inside the stomach, they eat the wood, digest it, and they poop out an enzyme. I'm, that's the best I can do right there. I'm sorry. And so in their excrement, this enzyme that is made from wood is what the termites eat. They digest it and go. So both organisms live. The termites eat wood. The symbiotes inside its stomach digest the wood and then excretes out an enzyme. And that's what the termite eats and lives off of. One cannot survive without the other. Do you see my point? Which came first, the termite or the symbiote? <laughs> Maybe they both come from some poop. I don't know. But you can't have a termite without the symbiote. It, it literally has to be together. It's creative design is what I'm trying to say. God created everything in the beginning. You can't get away from creative design. I'm sorry if you're visiting with us uh, this morning. You probably had no clue what you was getting into. <sighs> All right. Why do we talk about design? Let me pull this to a close here. It's because God shows in different ways himself. And so when you look at creation, you go, well, how does creation show God? I, I, I don't see God in creation. Well, let, let me give you three ways God shows himself in creation. Number one, it shows God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He created galaxies, moons, stars, suns, planets, everything by speaking it into existence. Nothing is too hard for our God. He created the ocean water. He created lakes. He created natural water. So if somebody says, well, how can God walk on water? Very easy. My God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. He created the water. He can walk on it. Amen? You create a car. Can you drive it? Can you jump on top of it? Can you change its tire? Can you flip it over? Can you take it to the junkyard? You can do whatever you want with it because you made it. Amen? And when God can speak the world and the universe into existence, I think he can walk on water. Well, well what about he died and come back from the dead? Well, he's the giver of life. 
He takes life. He gives life. I think he can come back from the dead because he's all powerful. Amen? Amen. Nothing is too hard for God. He is omnipotent. Number two, it shows God's wisdom. God's wisdom in displaying creation. When you look at creation, every individual organism, everything, I could just take you to the human eye and show you the complexity of the human eye. The circulatory system, the brain, the waves, the animals, simple organisms. It doesn't matter. They are completely designed with precision and complexity, which shows God's wisdom. Number three, God's goodness. Let me tell you something. Every plant, animal, and organism in this world, God provides for. He created them, and he provides them, shows you how merciful he is to provide for his creation. And we talk about oxygen. I remember years ago, they used to uh, complain because they said that uh, the rainforest was going to, when they cut all the trees down in the rainforest, oh my gosh, they're going to take all of our oxygen, and and, and we're not going to be able to breathe. Humankind, we're doomed. Guess what? You know what my God said? I'm bigger than them. And besides, you don't get all the oxygen from trees. You get it from plankton in the ocean. 82% of the Earth's oxygen comes from plankton in the ocean. Do you know what eat plankton? All kinds of fish. Do you know we've never ran out of plankton? Hello? You know we've never ran out of oxygen either? (laughs) There's plenty of plankton. Feeds the animals, and it Uh, gives off enough oxygen so that we can breathe air. And trees help too. I don't mean that. We're, you know, uh, Revelation 11, 18 tells us that we're to take care of God's earth. So if you cut down a tree, probably should plant another one. Amen? But man, it just shows you God takes care of his creation. Atheists say that there's no evidence for the existence of God, but when presented with an intelligent design and these arguments... They always go to this. They say, well, what about disease and mutations and natural disasters and the destruction of life and and the environment? And they say, what kind of God would make a world like this? God didn't make the world like this. All of the problems that we have today is because of sin. Sickness, death, disease, destruction, and decay all came about because of sin. Because of Adam's sin, and he was our representative, we all became sinners. Thorns and thistles and them dumb little briar things that stick to your socks, all of those things came about because of sin. Sin shows us there's a problem, and that problem is within every one of us. But praise be to God. Creation shows God's goodness. God goes beyond that in his goodness. Even though sin has come to every person, sickness, death, and disease will come upon everybody. And at some point, everybody's going to die. But here is the beauty of God's goodness. It doesn't have to be that way. God has provided us a way of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. By his death, burial, and resurrection, we will live again too. We'll live again in the perfect creation that God created in the beginning. He's going to restore that creation. And even though we may physically die, from that moment forward, we'll ever be present with the Lord Jesus, and we will never die again. And one day, we're going to get a perfect body, and we will be with him forever and ever and ever. When Adam sinned, he brought the curse upon all mankind, but Jesus brought the way to be reconciled back to him. And so I implore you, if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, would you be reconciled back to him this morning? He is the designer. He created everything. And one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And so if you've never put your trust, trusting in God for your life, for your resurrection, for everything, for him taking your penalty on the cross, shedding his blood, his death, burial, and resurrection, trusting in him, if you've never done that, I implore you this morning, be reconciled back to God. And if you have trusted Jesus... You need to build some arguments to give a defense to anybody who asks you of the hope and the joy that you have. Whatever your need, we invite you to come. Would you bow for prayer? Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your creation. Thank you for design. Thank you for showing us, God, everything that you would have for us. Lord, 
I'm so thankful that your word gives us answers. We don't have all the answers. Your word doesn't give us all the answers. But God, I just say thank you. Thank you for everything you have given us. Thank you for everything that you have showed us. Thank you for the evidence and the substance and everything that we just don't believe blindly. We know you are real. We know you created everything. We know you died. Lord, if there's someone here today that's never put their trust in your son, I pray that that your spirit of truth convict them to bring them forward. I'd love to show them how they can be reconciled back to you, have heaven and eternal life. And God, for your church, I pray that they would begin to build a defense. They say they believe in you. Why? Do they know why? Do they have a defense? Do they have joy? Man, let them begin to build so they can destroy arguments. We love you, Lord. And whatever, uh, whatever need, we just pray, Lord, that you would have your way. Have your way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.